All right, so Mike, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, uh, battalion, platoon, squad, rank, etc., all that. Yeah, what I can remember of it. Uh, my name is Michael Thompson. I uh, served in Vietnam with the 199th Light Weapons Infantry, Charlie Company, uh, 3rd Infantry. I was born in Franklin, Indiana. The first thing I heard, well, it basically, right before the Kennedy assassination, I guess, we, were, we had Green Beret troops in there. So we were getting a little, you know, televised information back then, but nothing like the later years of the war. Yeah. Yeah. And so were they discuss were they talking about the communism over there or anything, or are they yeah. just saying we're helping them fight some freedom yeah. war? Yeah, helping them fight the communists. Okay. We were, we were trained like the mountain yards and the South Vietnamese army, and my dad was in the Navy, and I was actually staying with him at the time in Charleston, South Carolina. So, you know, he was cool with it. My parents were back in Indiana, I mean, my mom and stepdad were back in Indiana, so I didn't really get a take on that. They showed up after I came back wounded and had a whole different <laughs> outlook yeah. at things, but, you know, me going in, I, I, you know, it was just, back then, it's, America did what America did, and we didn't ask a whole lot of questions, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, there were guys already coming back, you know? Um, oh, when you went in, there was already people coming back. Oh, yeah. We, uh, the guy, his mother worked for my parents as a cook in the restaurant. Uh, his name was Joe Applegate. He joined the Marines. He came back in a box before I got drafted. Uh, several guys had come back messed up, you know. But like I said, it was just like... Yeah, it's just what you did. Cars, girls, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. beer. You and know. This, all these gentlemen were out of Charleston, these gentlemen who were coming back? No, those they were out of Monticello. They were out of Indiana. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I think I was a little, little maybe almost 19. Did you have a girlfriend or a wife when you joined? <laughs> Several. <laughs> How did they feel about it? Uh, you know, you know the same old story. Were they there for you when you got back? Uh, <laughs> now that's a long story. I, uh, the the main girl I was dating when I got drafted, uh, wound up pregnant, uh, so I took leave, went home, married her. Her parents took her to Alabama and had an abortion and told me that she never was pregnant. It was a kidney infection or some stupid shit. So when I got wounded and sent back, they came to see me in the hospital. I had figured it all out and I ran them out of the room. And, and uh, when I got out, stayed with them for about a week. One morning I got up and said, I'm going to the store to get some cigarettes and was gone. They had to hunt me down like three years later to, even to get a divorce. It's like, no, nah, fuck you. Yeah, so she could get my allotment from overseas, which, of course, she just blew it, you know. So how long were you trained before you were deployed? Um, I think basic training, I think, is six weeks. I think AIT, Advanced Infantry Training, is another probably six weeks. And then jump school, which I opted out halfway through jump school, airborne school. I was I was scheduled to be airborne infantry, but I opted out of jump school. So that took me out of airborne. That Just made me what they call a straight leg infantry. <laughs> okay, okay. Grunt. Okay. We started out with the M14. We were in that transition between the M14 and the M16. Uh, so we trained with the M14 first, and then we went to the M16. And of course, we were trained on the M60, 50 cal. Um, those were the, you know, the, I guess the, let's call them rifle types uh, of weapons I was trained on. Of course, you got claymores, hand grenades, blah, 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 all yeah. the other stuff too. Trip, you know, tripwire explosives, dead cord, all that kind of stuff. But, 
know, as far as uh, things I could pull the trigger on, mm -hmm. it was the M14, M16, M60, and the 50 cal. Okay, okay. And um, so outside of the extremes of happy and scared and all of that, what is the most memorable moment of the war? most memorable moment I think stepping off the plane getting there it was like stepping into a, onto a different planet literally the heat hit you like a like a tank uh, the smell of diesel and burning shit just permeated everything uh, as we're coming if you remember the movie uh, platoon when those guys are getting off the plane, arriving, they're bringing bodies past them and stuff. Well, that's, that's exactly how it was. Without getting into any of the ugly aspect of uh, combat, obviously, could you explain, is it more uh, instinct-driven or is it a very emotionally driven in the moment? I believe starts out emotionally mm -hmm. and ends up being instinct. Okay. And you're and talking about uh, ends up, it's, that's after a few firefights? No, the, you, your first okay. firefight. It's, it's like emotionally, I guess you can call it emotionally, I think the first thoughts that go through your head is, oh my God, this shit's fucking real. Yeah. <laughs> because until then, it's just another story. Yeah. It's like being in school, mm -hmm. teaching you history, you know. Well, once it starts, that's the first thought that comes into your mind. And then once you shake that off, it's all instinct. You just do what you do. Mm -hmm. Some people, like I, I think I said in the other interview, some people will just lay flat on the ground and pray. And some people just go nuts. Mm -hmm. Me, I went nuts because I, you know, I, I'll pray afterwards, but right now, People are shooting at me. I'm, you know, I'm gonna shoot back. Personally, I enjoyed the experience as much as I. I never really hated it. Uh, it was scary. It was dirty. It was all those things. But uh, it was a different country. Uh, I liked the jungle. I like the general population um so what was your question <laughs> uh it was um when you hear of vietnam what is the first oh. thing that comes to mind um probably that it's a, a really cool part of the world that whole you know cambodia laos vietnam thailand all all those asian southeast asian countries are really um, different and, and the culture is very, very interesting. You know, it's just, um, I'd go back, you know, somebody yeah. give me a free ticket, I'll go back. <laughs> a gentleness and demeanor that promotes simplicity and all that covering a ability to be just as cruel as they can be i mean literally that's that's the the that's the culture of those people mm -hmm. you know they rather not fight but if they had to fight believe me there's there's no rules. If you don't mind me asking, how many, uh, like I said, I don't want to get into the super ugly stuff, but how many uh, people did you know that you lost during the conflict? Probably five that I, that I knew well. I mean, we'd be on like a big old cordon, which is cordon circle, basically. Uh, but you don't see Every, everybody in the corridor because you're spread out over miles, right? Okay. And the, the purpose is to close in and capture everything inside that circle. 
So I would see guys get hit, you know, uh, mostly from traps, but I didn't know them necessarily. Uh, lots of times that would happen. You just, you'd be walking, you hear boom, you look over and there's a cloud of smoke, somebody on the ground screaming and shit, you know, but they might be, you know, 200 yards away, you know, but personal friends, people I had relationships with, five. Right. Yeah. Um, so given the current state of Vietnam and how it is a thriving society with democracy in place and has adopted capitalism, how do you feel about, do you feel that what you guys did over there was successful? Do you think that you did something? No. No. Okay. It's, it's capitalist, but it's communist capitalist. The, the, the government and the police in Vietnam are as bad as they are in China. It's just, uh, they love tourists because um, that's big money for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, yeah, I, you know, what happened, man? We fought for 14 years, killed a bunch of people, killed a bunch of us, and eventually the communists just rolled in when we backed out anyway. So it's like, you know, really, what did we do? Mm -hmm. And why were we do, trying to do it in the first place? Look at Vietnam now. Is it horrible? Are they, you know, doing the Pol Pot thing, massacring all their people, like, you know, like our propaganda said would happen and all that kind of stuff? No, they're... So why didn't we just let it happen in the first place? I'll tell you why, if you want to know. Yeah, yeah, please. And with this, so that was like basically the uh, military-industrial complex involved in the beginning? Yeah, it's, it always is, man. It all starts over lies and and just continues with more lies, more lies, Afghanistan, Iraq, all of it. You know, it's like, we've never fought a genuine patriotic war at all, <laughs> ever. Mm -hmm. People go, well, what about the Revolutionary War? What about it? <laughs> that, that was Rothschild-type bankers, you know, that was the Bank of England, that was, that, you know, it was all, it's all just bullshit. The Civil War, same thing. So, you know, we, we never, the only time we could have a righteous war is if somebody tried to invade us. That's it. Uh, in another country, come on, is that our business? You know, no, we're doing it for profit. Not my profit or your profit, but. Yeah, like the oligarchs yeah, profit. Yeah, exactly, you know, so. No, so as uh, one last thing, um, and obviously I know you've done a bunch of stuff that you probably don't want to talk about, but just as a blanket statement, what have you spent your time doing since you uh, left the military? Just trying to live the best life I can and, uh, you know, always wondering why me, you know, mm -hmm. because it is a crapshoot. You know, people that tell you, well, he was a badass. <laughs> that's got nothing to do with it man it's it's a roll of the dice whether you make it back or don't and you know I I had a saying you know I'm not a hero but I have walked beside a lot of them. so you know and some of them didn't make it and it wasn't because they were weak or scared or anything it was just their time and you know, you, you always wonder, you know, why you made it back. I was just a dumb kid, man, you know. <sighs> Who knows? It was just, you know, after a while you just stop trying to figure it out. Go, okay, <laughs> you know. But, you know, if, if you dwell on it too much, it's like you start thinking about what those guys could have been, what their life could have been, you know. Uh, and it just didn't happen so you know I, I try to try to become a better person you know a, after getting over the major part of PS, PTSD I just began trying to be a better person every day you know uh, I'm still an asshole but you know I'm a better asshole <laughs> than I was.